This video is an overview of the CIC survey utility for site and path survey data collection. Site survey data collection includes general information, enclosure information, antenna support structure, equipment racks, equipment schedule, radio links, cross connects of multiple types, AC and DC power, uh, rectifiers, batteries and generators, site photos and drawings, uh, surveyor and quality notes, as well as um, a section on cellular and fiber installation. Past survey data collection includes N-site data tied back to site surveys if the site surveys are done, antenna heights and azimuths, antenna mounts, critical points on the paths, blockages, surveyor notes, and path loss link files, PL5 files, uh, are updated by the surveyor and linked to these surveys, as well as some other areas. Uh, in both cases, path and site survey, the tool is constantly evolving with the addition of new fields as required. So these two lists are by no means limiting and may be added to. When you open the tool, it looks like this, which is a very large form and may seem a little daunting. So before we talk about the details of the form, I'll show you um, conceptually how it's organized. This slide shows the four groupings in that large form. The top is a list of surveys with, which allows you to filter your views. So if you want to filter on any of the types that are indicated, the customer, the site ID, the surveyor, the date that's being surveyed, you can filter your view and just get a list of the surveys for those particular filter settings. The section underneath it is specific administration parameters associated with the selected survey. So in this example, um, the top survey in the list is selected and you can see that the dates and, and the surveyor and so on are, are all populated into that edit area, that admin parameters area. Under that is a collection of buttons to access all of the detailed editors in the tool where the actual collected data is entered. In, that, in this sense, this particular form is is a master control panel of sorts which leads you into the details of the editors elsewhere. The lower portion, the bottom portion of the form is a tool operations area. So it includes things like archiving your data, bringing in archived data, uh, accessing an equipment library, changing timeout dates if you have admin privileges to do that, um, creating reports, creating maps. So this is all the administration portion of the tool itself. Uh, but it is tied back into the surveys. Okay, so looking at the actual tool itself, you can see at the top there's a selection for site survey and path survey. Uh, the, the function buttons that are displayed as well as uh, other information changes when you switch between them. So if I switch, for example, to path survey, uh, for one thing, I don't have the same list of surveys. Now I have one pass survey here. You can see the buttons change significantly for access to different functionality. I'll go back to site survey for, for the moment. And currently we have two site surveys listed. You can list any number um, that you want and these are loaded through the archive function, uh, which I'll show you briefly at the end here. Um, so the one that I've selected at the top here is a Mastec type survey and in this case the customer is CIC itself. Um, by, by clicking on this I populate this area of survey details here and then I can edit them, um, add and subtract of course surveys to the list manually if I wish. Um, but in this example for example if we're looking at CIC customer and Mastec type and the survey date is here, um, the surveyor name and or ID rather and quality control person ID is not assigned. So essentially you can go through these and, and edit them for any individual survey uh, and save. Now underneath this is the most important area is all of these buttons. Now I'll start by drawing your attention to the fact that there's different colored buttons. So the text in this fiber and cellular is black as is the AC power and panels whereas most of the buttons are green, antenna support structure is green, and the QC notes down here is red. So green and red mean that these are required fields for this particular customer and survey type. Um, so red means that it has not been completed, whereas green means it has been completed. And the setting of completion is done within the editors, and I'll show you that when we open one in a moment here. 
the black uh, buttons or the black text buttons are buttons that we do not have to fill out for this particular type of survey but the tool includes the ability to do that if you wish when you're on site so if the, if the surveyor does not want to add extra work he just ignores the ones that have black text okay so I'm going to open a couple of them and show you very quickly the editors to give you an appreciation we'll start with the general information which is quite simple it's essentially the site name and identifiers, the address, uh, the coordinates, the elevation, information about access to the site, um, inf owner information if it's entered and there is an owner editor in the tool, as well as other carriers on site. So all of this data is general to the site, it's not specific details about what's in the site. And as you can see, the data entry checkbox, data entry complete checkbox at the bottom here is green and it's checked. This is telling the tool and telling the user through the green button behind that this is completed. But if the surveyor felt, well, I need to go and get more information, for example, other carriers, and I want to go back to this and I want to remember to go back, he checks this off. So it turns red, it says incomplete, and the button in the background becomes red. So when he looks at it the next day or, or whenever he's back he will see the red and he'll realize I got to go back and complete something I missed. Um, okay so that's common to all of the uh, of all of the forms this data entry complete or incomplete. Uh, another one I'll show you quickly is enclosure another relatively simple editor uh, you can have multiple enclosures up to five that could be cabinets it could be uh, buildings um, there's a number of selections and you can also type in a new type if you wish so in this case I have a shelter on enclosure number one there are no other enclosures in this example but you can set up the number of floors and where the equipment's located and things about waveguide entry ports uh, dimensions of the shelter um, a number of other items and notes. Most of the forms, if not all, have notes fields, so you can put in a lot, a lot of notes, which is very helpful um, if, if the field is not there to describe something that you want to add or some explanation of perhaps why you couldn't collect information. Um, data entry complete is here. Uh, the other thing I'll mention in this form, and it's common throughout, is some of the text is black and some is this grayed out text. Um, the grayed out text is, is fields within the forms that you don't have to fill out for this particular customer and survey type, but it is available and you can see it. You can actually fill out the fields if you wish. Now, um, if, if the surveyor doesn't want to see these extra fields, they're just cluttering up his view, he can hide them with this hide not required fields button down here and only the ones he has to fill out are there. Another one I'll show you quickly is the antenna support structure. This is a large editor. Um, there's a number of support structures. They could be towers or buildings, for example, um, and you're allowed up to five. So you select which one and you basically fill out basic information about the tower here, its type, its height, things about ground bars, waveguide runs, uh, antennas, how many antennas there are, waveguide bridges, and so on. So this is all general to the support structure. This area here in the center is what elements are mounted on that tower or on that structure. Usually it's antennas, but you can also do a lot of other things like we have star mounts and lighting, for example, um, even conduit, crow's nest, uh, as well as all different kinds of, of antennas. So in the microwave business, we'd be using microwave uh, parabolic antennas for the most part, but there may be other things on the same tower. Um, there's other items, of course, in this. So there's diameter, if it's, if it's a, a parabolic antenna, for example, what height it's at in feet, what's the azimuth, and so on. So all of this can be edited, added to, subtracted from by the surveyor, and it's done on a per antenna support structure, so on a particular tower. Down here is available unused space on tower legs. So if I look here on tower leg number one, between a height of 45 feet and 57 feet, there's a gap, so there's nothing mounted there, and that could be very useful information for a planner. Um, this area would be if you're adding new antennas to the system when the, when the survey data is loaded into the tool, uh, this would be included. In this case, there isn't any, um, but then the surveyor could uh, tag it as to whether or not the available uh, antenna center line uh, 
uh, is the same as the desired. He would put in the actual number, and if he has the expertise, he can say whether the tower can support the extra antenna. There's notes, and again, there's the data entry complete. So this is a very, very quick look at the antenna support editor. Um, a couple of others quickly. Uh, equipment schedule, where we have racks we enter. There's equipment schedule. This is essentially a listing by rack here. The racks are entered, as I said, separately in the rack editor. But then on each of the racks, uh, what between what rack unit positions certain shelves or types of equipment are mounted. And again, there's uh, comments associated with the entries. And there's data entry complete um, checkbox as before. Now behind this, there's also a library in the tool, which comes with the tool. Um, and it is a essentially a list of uh, equipment with photos to help the surveyor identify what he's looking at. So if he's trying to figure out um, which product it is that he's looking at, um, he can look in this list here and behind it there's photos. So we can, most of the, not, not all of the elements, but most of them have photos. So he can look at what he sees in the site, looks here and say, oh that's the same item. Um, and then he could simply click on the apply to equipment schedule will get added automatically once he sets up the rack number and the position. So it's an easy way to identify equipment and to apply it into the schedule of equipment. Uh, I'll show you the DSX cross connect editor here. So this is a list of panels by, and again we choose the enclosure first. Uh, so this is different panels and their types and then down here is the positions that are occupied in the panel with notes or labels as you wish. And this is a simple thing to add and subtract from both panels and uh, position uh, on the panel. Okay, let's close this as well. Um, I'll show you uh, DC panels. This is power DC power panels next. Again, I'm not showing you everything because it's it's a very large editor. So here again, we choose which enclosure we're working in. Uh, we choose which power plant. Actually, the power plant is here. Then we choose the DC panel itself. And within that, we set up all the breakers. So all of these can be edited and saved by the surveyor, uh, including all of this information. They just, in all of these cases, I should mention that above the list, there's edit fields that he just fills out and then clicks save or add if it's if it's a save, if it's a change, if, it, if it's a new entry, it would be add or delete if he wants to remove something. Um, so these are breaker positions in the panel. This could be a secondary fuse panel, and this would be a PDU fuse panel uh, entries as well. So, um, so continuing here, um, I'll go, I'm going to skip a lot of these. I'll go to photos next to show you photos because that's quite interesting. So. In the case of photos, there are required photos for every survey type. Um, these are set up in the tool before the survey is done. So um, the color of the text in the photo list here um, is indicating whether or not they're required or not. So the black ones were added by the surveyor in this example. This is a completed survey. So in this case, they were added. So they're black saying they weren't important. Uh, I didn't have to do them. It's not part of my requirements, but I saw them and I added photos. The green says they were required and they were added. Uh, the photos were added, so that is complete. That's why it's green. There's also red lines for a few here that I set up. So site owner placard on gate was not, was not entered as a photo. It's a missing photo. And I think there might be some others in here, I'm not sure. So these are um, colors tell you very quickly whether or not they're loaded and whether or not they're required. Now, I'll show you next the uh, list of requirements. So there's a customer required photos editor, which uh, administrators can access. Normally, surveyors would not have access to this. So this is a list by customer and site or path of all the photos required. So you can edit these as, a, as an administrator um, just by typing into the top and you can add, delete, and save changes like all the editors. So this will be a list of everything that's required. So any new surveys um, for this customer would automatically have this list of required photos added to the photo editor. And they would all be red text initially because there wouldn't be any photos loaded yet. 
So that's our requirements. Um, now when I want to load a photo, I choose the one I want to load it on. And the somewhat difficult way is I simply click one, one at a time, import photo, and I go browse and add it. Um, that's a little bit slow when you have a lot of photos to do, especially if you have multiple photos of the same description, as you can see through here. So an alternate way of doing that is we have a, a photo folder view. What that does is it allows you, when you go into a site, you take 100 photos of the site, and in, in, they're in a folder on your computer or, or on your camera, which is connected into your laptop, for example. So you can browse and then load all those images into a, into a view and then you can pick and choose which ones apply to which entry. So let me just demonstrate that quickly. So I'll hide this preview window so it takes space and it's a small screen. Uh, I'll open the photo folder here and this is where I can browse for whatever folder has all of my photos in. So I'll just pause the video while I do that, save a couple of seconds of demonstration time here. Okay, so this is a, a view uh, of the photos in that folder that I browse to. Now if I want to apply specific folders, uh, photos rather, to specific entries in my requirements, I just click on whichever one I'm interested in and I'll go for this site owner placard on gate which is red and has no photo currently. So I click it on it here in my requirements list and, and in, in my list here I find images or a single image or multiple images. I'll just do a few to show you. So here's one, you know, just choose a couple randomly. I know, I know they don't make a lot of sense for the entry, but just for demonstration purposes. So here I've selected four photos that I want to load associated with this, this um, site owner placard. Uh, once I've selected them, I click apply. And first of all, you can see they disappear from this view, although I can bring them back by just clicking on restore here because I might want to use them again. Um, and now in here you can see site owner placard on gate and I have one, two, three, four entries for the photos I selected. And if I want to see them, I unhide the preview and they're here. So it's a simple process of selecting and, and clicking visually from my list. Now if I prefer to work textually, I can click on the list by name here and just choose them by name. Um, personally, I prefer the the photo view here, the, the thumbnails. Okay, so that's the photos. There's a lot more detail in here, but I'm going quickly so I can get through this. Um, drawings are much simpler. We have a number of drawings that come as requirements for the survey type. Uh, these have all been loaded. They're actually Excel files uh, because our customer wanted Excel drawings. So if I want to see what's been loaded, I can select it in the list. If it's, if it's visible like a like a photo, like a JPEG, it'll appear in the window here. These are Excel, so but I can open the Excel file just from this button and very quickly see what's there. So just zoom out a little to see it here. So this is the drawing. Um, this is an antenna support structure drawing. Um, there's also a rack drawing, uh, both of which are created automatically within the tool. Um, by the user clicking on the correct functionality. So here's a rack drawing that was created automatically by the tool. And this was done using the equipment schedule that we looked at before. All of these entries are in the equipment schedule so the tool knows which rack position they're in and which rack. Um, and it knows from the data in the library as well how high they are. But also the rack, the rack units is also telling them. So drawings can be loaded by clicking on individual drawings and importing them. Uh, if you have a new drawing you want to add that's not in the list, you just fill up the description at the top here and, and do your import and they'll get added. So that's drawings. Um, so that's essentially a good appreciation of, of the functionality here. Um, the I'll show you the path survey as well, what there is in terms of editing for path survey. So here we have photos. It's very similar to what you just saw. Um, path data is where you put in a lot of the information about the tower, the, you know, the antenna mount, the height uh, values at each end, and so on. So all of this information is, is edited. Um, 
there's also, uh, you notice the colored areas tie back to the site editors. If you have a site survey, um, then this tells you that the entries are also included in the site survey. So they're copied, they're, they're common between the two environments. And you can uh, click on the buttons down here to go to those uh, site manager uh, editors. Um, so that's the two survey types and the edit fields in general. Uh, the bottom is very interesting. Um, all this functionality at the bottom. Now I'll start with this Excel button. Um, most of the reports that are created by the tool uh, have always been required to be Excel drawings or Excel reports rather. So although it's possible for us to create other types, but currently by clicking on a survey that we're working on and then clicking on the Excel button here, we can create very large complicated Excel reports. Um, of course, customized to whatever the requirements of the customer are. Now, I think I can pull up an example to show you one. Okay, so this is a survey uh, report that was done in exactly the format our customer wanted. So there's general site information here. They wanted photos as well in terms of small uh, thumbnail, thumb prints. Um, then we have a floor plan, rack information, the same drawing you saw a moment ago, equipment schedule, um, power info, cross-connect information. So all of this is a large Excel report automatically created by the tool um, in pretty short order and saving a, an awful lot of manual labor generating this report. Um, going left from the Excel button, PL5 allows us to populate path loss link files with some data that we've collected. The outputs uh, map here, this allows us to create Google Earth maps of the sites and paths, as well as uh, path loss uh, grid maps, GR5 maps, uh, and also Topo Express, uh, Topo USA, excuse me, although I don't believe that's in use anymore. Um, there's other items here, Lib equipment library I showed you, uh, local archive allows you to load surveys and also save um, your, your surveys into archives, uh, either by survey or by group of survey. So for example, if you're doing 10 surveys, you might save into 10 different folders, uh, all of the data, including the photos and the drawings for a survey. And then you could just bring in the one you wanted later. Um, there's a restore data capability. There's a backup drive. Um, you can load data from customer uh, spreadsheets, for example, uh, to create the surveys that you go out to do. And then there's some editors for customers, owners, employees, and timeout. So that's uh, my walkthrough of the survey tool. Uh, I've skipped an awful lot of detail, but it, I think you've got a very good appreciation of what it's capable of. Thank you.